um, how do how do how do you Mus how do Muslims reconcile um, the doctrine of the Tahweed that Allah is supposed to be completely one with the the uh, the doctrine which is although not accepted by the Shia but mostly by the Sunnis um, of um, of the uncreatedness of the Quran. So, Josh, what's your understanding of the uncreated Quran? Because this is this is a question that's been coming up for a long time. Um, speakers corner and brother uh, i've probably seen a dozen if half a dozen at least brothers who've answered the question in pretty much the same way H have you never asked the question at speakers corner have you never received an answer for this question or so, so i've uh, i've asked it to a few people um in speakers corner um the the answer i've always got is that it refers to that the quran is an attribute of allah that's the answer i've been given um, it's not, I don't think the, I don't think it, it was an it was a, it's an attribute. But we've 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 I think we've answered the question many times that with the knowledge of Allah, the Quran would have existed eternally. You see, the actual physical book, the Mus'haf that was sent down, and this is obviously an English translation, but the actual Arabic text when it was written down. It is something that once it gets old, it's even burnt or it's um, buried or whatever to dispose of it in a, in a respectful way. Burning it is not actually disrespectful in Islam. It's a valid way of uh, getting rid of an old uh, manuscript that's damaged and that can't be read. So you would have a, a, a new copy or whatever, and the old one would be uh, respectfully uh, sort of, uh, you know, got away with in that way. Um but the knowledge of Allah as a Jew, um, I think you would accept that whatever knowledge Allah has, like, for example, the Torah itself, would you say that the Torah was something that came into existence or did God have that in his knowledge, but bring it into existence when he chose to? So I believe that um, that the Torah was, in fact, created. Only, only God himself is uncreated, but everything within the so-called knowledge of God has to have been created at some point. Right. So are you saying that there was a time when God did not know of the Torah? No, there was not a time before it because God is above time. So God created time. Whether or not so, God created the Torah before he created time is not something I know. So but basically what we're saying is that was there ever a moment when God did not know of the Torah? In a sense, yes, i.e. that prior to the creation of the Torah, there could be no knowledge of the Torah. So there was a moment when God had no knowledge of the Torah? Yes. It's so you don't think God it. has no full knowledge? No, how? because, because right. knowledge, we believe, is an attribute of God. God's omniscience is an attribute of him, and therefore he, had to, he, he created his own omniscience. Josh, is that a mainstream uh, Jewish belief in, t in terms of uh, actual rabbinical uh, grounding that no. they believe that the Torah actually, at one point, God did not, did not know what he was going to say, what he was going to God knows the future. What, what God was going so, to give to one second about, let me just uh, Can I just give a line of question in one second? Sorry. Josh, do you believe God knows the future? Yes, because there is no future in, when, when, when it comes to God, because... But for God, all time, past, present, and future right, so, is an open so, so then God knows what the Torah is, then, isn't it? Always. Before there is... There is no before. There is no before. there is a knowledge, an attribute of knowledge Josh, that Josh, God has created. There's no before for you, is there? There's no yes. concept of time for God, you just said. So how can you have a before now? That is a good point. So yeah. so now we, we are saying God did know what was in the Torah. It's a good, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a good point you're raising. It's a good point. Um, I just want to... Because your question was really an interesting one, because you... Because you you raised this as a question about Tawheed. And you said that this is a, it requires an explanation to having uh, the Quran as an uncreated a statement that the Quran is uncreated, and then you have Allah who is eternal. Does this affect Tawheed in any way? That was really the underlying thing that I think you were trying to get to. And so I'm going to give you an analogy. Now, obviously, all analogies are imperfect, and we can't make perfect analogies, particularly when it comes to the creator. But I'm going to try and give an analogy to try and explain so you're speaking right josh yes yeah can your speech exist without you i don't know i don't know can my speech theoretically there could be my speech without me i suppose i'm not sure though i would say that that's 
clearly uh, the answer to that question is clearly no. Um, I don't know how you're thinking. So if you were, if you did not exist, could your speech exist? It depends. Is if my speech has to, if there's a, if a prerequisite to the existence of my speech is the existence of myself. Just sorry, sorry to interrupt you. You're you're thinking. I don't understand your thinking process. What you're doing is you're taking this speech, and you're giving it attributes. Now. Now we we've agreed that speech is an attribute of the creator. We've agreed this, uh, like just as speech is something that manifests from you. Now the question is, do the attributes exist on their own or not? With, with, with regards to attributes of myself or attributes of of God. So the analogy the analogy is to get you to think about the creator, but I'm trying to use yourself as an example just to try and give that. So for example, is can your speech exist without you? So if we God forbid, leave God out of the picture for this particular analogy, <laughs> um, because otherwise it's going to get far too complicated. Then, for sure, that then then you would be right that my speech could not exist without me. Okay, so now I'm going to say let's let's talk about the creator. Now I would say the 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 attributes of the creator can't exist without the creator. Yes, that's true. Yeah. So now, so now we don't have a conflation between we're not comparing two different things. The Quran is the speech of Allah. It's an attribute of we. Do you understand? Yes, I got now that. the question. I got so now the question comes: When we're talking about the texts, do we are we referring to that attribute or not? So there's two things here. Now we have to sort of now we have to differentiate this. The attribute we've agreed is it why? Because the creator is eternal. The attribute is eternal. It's this is therefore the Quran is uncreated and eternal. So that's now that's a dealt with thing. This is a this is a creation like somebody's put these pages together, written the pages and the ink down. This is not that attribute. I understand the difference between the, between the written Quran and the and the, and yeah. the spoken Quran. That's so. That's there, so what I would say that that means that coming to the concept of Tawhid, that it doesn't impact that at all. And another example would be creation. One of the attributes of God is that He is the Creator. Now the yeah. the creation. So we agree with this, yeah? Yes. So the creative um, command, that, that creative command is not separate from the creator in any sense, right? I would disagree with that because prior to, to, to because prior to having created anything, how can God be considered to be a creator? In order to be a creator, you need to have a creation. So, okay, no. that's interesting. So I think that you, sorry, Hamza, go on, you want to? I was going to say, you don't need to create to have the attribute of a creator. You just need to create to demonstrate the attribute. Uh, but that, that depends on how we understand what the attribute is. Um, so let me just think of how to explain this. Oh, okay. Before Allah created, uh, before God created the, the universe, you believe God created yeah. the universe? Yes. Did he have the attribute of creator? Before he created, before he created anything... He did, not did he have the attribute of creator? Attribute of creator, no. No. How no. did he create then? Okay, How let's change the word for a moment, Josh. Let's make let's make the word ability. Ability. Okay. God did God have the ability to create? Yes. Okay, so that's the attribute. That's the attribute. Oh, that's what you mean when you say attribute. So yeah, okay. this is really good. The creation is a manifestation of the attribute. Evidence yeah. of the attribute, if you like. No, it's the manifestation of ah. Okay, fine. We're, we're, oh, we're, I need we're another mic, man. I've got, I've got to stop purpose. doing this with you, Josh. Sorry. So carry, carry on, carry on. So hopefully Sorry, that's what? clear that there isn't an issue with the Tawhid and the concept of. Um... Does that make sense now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna what was your second question, Josh? What was the other question? 